the thing is, if you're going to argue that we have to believe in the Quran because of scientific facts, then that means that it's fair to me to marshal the argument that the Quran is wrong because of its scientific errors. The Quran says that the world is flat. The Quran says there can't be a solar eclipse. Both of these statements are false. The Quran gets it wrong. So when the Quran says that the mountains are put there to stop the earth moving, to stop the earth moving, it is precisely wrong. Because mountains are created by the earth's movement. Did you hear that? Okay, thank you, Auntie. Thank you, so, Andy. You, you, you talked about Noah's Ark. Now, Noah's Ark was built out of wood. Noah's Ark was built out of wood before there was even the pharaohs. A historian wouldn't look for Noah's Ark. A historian would look for evidence of a global flood. Okay? Now, the absence of the evidence of a global flood is as problematic for your belief as it is for my belief. Now, the point that we're talking about because I don't believe in a literal reading of Noah's Ark. I don't believe that there was a global flood that covered Mount Everest. I don't have that belief. Now, if you have that belief, then you have another problem that there's no evidence of a global flood. So you're only compounding your problems. What I'm saying to you is that the Quran is saying, it's saying in Surah 26, 49, it says, Pharaoh said, you put your faith in him before I give you leave. Lol, he is doubtless is your chief. Lol, he doubtless is your chief who taught you magic. But verily you shall come to know. Verily I will cut off your hands and your feet, alternately, and verily I will crucify you every one. So the Quran is saying that the pharaohs performed crucifixion as capital punishment. Now, if the pharaohs were in the practice of crucifying people, we would expect to see some kind of evidence that the pharaohs crucified people. But we find no evidence of it. None, zero, nada, nothing. All the evidence points to the fact that crucifixion came from Assyria and Babylon, so that's Iraq and Persia, and that he only reached Egypt at the time of Alexander the Great. That's fourth century. That means there's nearly a thousand years between when this story was said to happen and the first evidence of crucifixion reaching Egypt. Do you understand why that's a problem? How do you reply? What I'm saying to you, I mean, if I take your words, God, then uh, I will come to the conclusion that whatever uh, our book says, the Bible says, yeah. or the Quran says, Bible says that all been historically proven. If I'm, if I'm not wrong, that what you mean to say that uh, what Bible says that has been historically that has been historically proven. But what what I'm looking at, because history has limitation. I mean, what I'm trying to say that even you believe the flood was there, you believe the ark was there, but the history doesn't even confirm the Noah ark. But I don't talk about the flood. Let's forget about the flood. But we talk about the ark, but the history, if you look into the history, history doesn't be believe that there was any ark who Noah built it. So that's what I'm saying, that there is a limitation on the historical, because history is something like you really hardly to grasp. I come completely, I'm not discounting the factor of the history. History has a really significant impact on our latest study. When we go about the temple destruction, that's was the history which helps us. So what I'm saying that we can't uh, talk about history precisely or very conclusively, because history has also limitation in its sight. Okay, so here's the problem. Right. It is true that the absence of evidence is not evidence of absence. That is true. But we're not saying that history is silent about a topic. What we're saying is that history points in a completely different direction. Points in a completely other way. That's what we're saying. So the history points to the fact that the Quran has got it wrong. Now, here's why this is a problem. This Quran says that if it was from any other than Allah, I would find contradictions therein. That if this was from any other than Allah, I would find errors inside of it. Well, I'm telling you and I'm giving you my reasons that I found errors in the Quran, which means according to the Quran, it's not from Allah. By comparison, 
We Christians have no comparative belief. We don't have a verse in the Bible that says that if this Bible was from any other than God, you would find errors in the Bible. It doesn't say that. The Bible claims infallibility about saying who God is and about how we should be, how we should live. That's it. That's all the infallibility it claims. And all the Bible is theology. Every part of it is theology. Theology through history, theology through poetry, theology through biography, theology through parable. It's theology, theology, theology. The Quran is claiming to be perfect. Is that fair? Am I misrepresenting the Quran by saying it claims to be perfect? So if the Quran claims to be perfect and then I find that it's not perfect, it's fair to me to say that the Quran isn't from Allah. Do you understand? Yeah. So what I'm trying to say, Bob, exactly, I'm understanding where you're coming from. I mean, just this word that the Paroha says that I'm going to crucify you, the whole Quran is... Uh, like meaningless is something like a really uh, and based on the historical evidence that's something really for me is a strange the reason is that because i mean saying that this quran's from the god itself something like a a, a a claim which no other book says and makes it more significant and the things that i ask you a question about ark you you didn't reply me back that because ark you and me believe that there was a noah ark but history doesn't say about that even if you search it when the first ark works built you will see that was built in 1400 years before but the noha time noha time was way way before than that like a four or five thousand way before that so i can say i can say precisely and you can say that ark was built five thousand years before but if you see history history says the ark was built 1400 years before so my problem is that so all you've done is compound the problems of the Quran. You've just made it worse. But no, no, you don't understand my position. I don't believe that the story of Noah talks about a literal global flood. No, no, I'm not talking about I don't believe that. Yeah. The ark was made of wood. No historian would look for wood that's that old. They wouldn't look for that. But the point is, but, but the point is that crucifixion, I, I understand what you're saying. Yeah, but no, but no, you don't understand my position, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You really don't understand my position. I don't believe in a global flood. I don't believe but that water swept over Quran the mountains of Everest. Let me, let me, let me, let me. No historian would look for the ark. They wouldn't look for the ark. It's made of wood. The point is that your Quran is saying that the pharaohs practice crucifixion. So we would expect, because it is state policy, that therefore we would find evidence of crucifixion from Egypt. We don't. All the evidence points to the fact that crucifixion came from the Assyrians and the Babylonians. Now, I, that doesn't have a problem for me. Doesn't have a problem for me. Because I don't believe in a book, because I, firstly, the Bible doesn't claim that crucifixion was invented by the Egyptians. The first time crucifixion is mentioned in the Bible is a prophecy in the Psalms in the time of David. And that's a thousand years before Christ was crucified. And it was uh, 400 years before crucifixion was invented. So the first talk of crucifixion in the Bible is a prophecy that testifies to the reality and the truth of the Bible. But your Quran, the first time that it ascribes crucifixion to history, gets its history wrong. Now, if you're going to make that doubly worse by saying that, well, historians also don't find Noah's Ark, so therefore we can't believe in Noah's Ark, what we're saying is that the Quran has got an error. We, now, that means we've got, to, we've got to be talking about something that we can test. And when, his, when crucifixion came about, it's something that we can look into. We can trace the history of crucifixion. We can trace it from the Assyrians, sorry, from the Babylonians. We can trace it through the Assyrians. We can trace it through the Persians. We can trace it through um, Alexander the Great. We can trace it through the Romans. And then we can trace it to its final ending by the Christians. So we, we are know the history of crucifixion. And in no way does it support the Quranic narrative. The Quranic narrative is just flat out error, wrong, false. It's like when the Quran says the earth is flat. So, 
I don't remember where the Quran says the earth is flat. I haven't seen any place. But anyway, we will talk about that. Let's stick to the point. Uh, you mentioned that uh, why historian will look into the wooden ark. I mean, why? my question would be the same. Why would someone looking for the crucifixion? I mean, it's not a question about looking for something. I mean, it's the presence. If the ark was there, in 5,000 years before which you and me are believed, but the historian uh, says the ark was built 1,400 years before, we clearly know that there are uh, some history mistakes because there was an ark 5,000 years before. And the dispute, we not talk about 1,000 years, 2,000 years, I mean that dispute is very significant. The ark was 5,000 years before, but if you Google it, you will only find 1,400 years before. So my question is that it's not necessarily that there are some punishments over there which has been reported into the history because that could be possible that there was a punishment over there just because the punishment hasn't been discussed in history doesn't make them that it wasn't available over there i mean this is my uh, this is the way if i unbiasedly objectively or impartially i look into it but what i'm saying to you bro and this is the boy that you've got to deal with is we're not talking about silence we're not saying, one second, we're not saying history is silent about this topic. So is for the ark. No. So is for the ark. History, is, silent history for the ark. is completely silent about the ark. No, no, no. Okay. Yes, it is. Let's, let's it's completely take... silent. But hold on one second. I'm not getting off this topic. History is totally silent about the ark. That, that it doesn't, that it makes no comment on it at all. But what we are saying is that history does talk about crucifixion. It talks about. It talks, we see where crucifixion started. The Quran has crucifixion at the time. It, so it, what it says, Wikipedia is not an academic source, brother. Uh, uh, so the, the journal, the, the federal United States medical journal is, is an academic paper. And it says that the history of crucifixion goes like this. Assyria, sorry. Babylon, Assyria, Persia, Alexander the Great into Egypt, Romans, Christians, end. That is what history says. You're making an argument assuming that silence is saying nothing. I'm saying that silence is saying something and it contradicts your Quran. What I'm saying, not silence, I'm saying you believing on religiously on the history is wrong because no one should believe that religious whatever oh sorry history i'm sorry I'm, what i'm saying i can't what i'm trying to say what history says we shouldn't believe on that as a set on stone because history doesn't itself says conclusively about something i agree i'm not saying that yeah, that's you, you, but, but all you're doing bro is all you're doing is airing a question of probability yes yes, yes. right but that probability diminishes as the evidence increases. Agreed? Emerge, emerge yeah. Yes. Emerge. So as evidence emerges, emerge, yes. right, hold on. And would you agree as something moves forward in time, there's more evidence for it? Yeah, yeah exactly. Right. So evidence of some popular activity goes like an upward facing cone. Would you agree? That evidence for a popular activity or a popular thing goes like an upward facing cone. Yeah. Yeah, so it would go like it would go like this, right? So that's what we find. We find that the upward-facing cone of evidence all points to a, all points to the Babylonians and the Assyrians as the origin of crucifixion. The evidence cone increases from their period in history, from their geographical position, and it flows from where they were westward. So this is the point, if we're talking about probability. History works in probability, you're quite right to point that out. But therefore, that makes my argument stronger, not weaker. Because the evidence cone goes like this at the time of the Assyrians, well, goes like this at the time and the place of the Assyrians and Babylonians. There is nothing before it, nothing. Which means that the Quran, and I'm going to get on to why in my, in my next talk, the Quran is putting something into history that is wrong. Just like it does with the crucifixion. Just, just like it does with a mosque at Jerusalem. Just like it does with chainmail at the time of David. It gets its history wrong. Can I, can I say something? Maybe it supports your argument a little bit. 
I mean, why you assume that everybody, all the Muslims, believed in Quran that is coming from God? At the time, they were fighting between them that they say Quran is not from God, it's word of Muhammad. No, I mean, let's stick with the point. Yeah, let's Other, with point. Otherwise, it's going to be like a going yeah, around, around in circle. What I'm saying that if you saying, if you giving a uh, cone impression for the... Uh, Which you agree with? Yeah, of course, yeah, crucifixion one. I'm asking why you not giving the same analogy for the arc one? I mean, what's the difference between the arc and... I don't know how many times I can say this in plain English. I don't believe in the global flood as a literal event. There is no evidence for it. I am being consistent. Now, so there is no, arc, never been arc. no, I'm not saying there wasn't an arc. No, I'm not saying there wasn't an arc. What I'm saying is, what I am saying is that there is no evidence for a global flood. So, but, oh, I'm not asking about global flood. But hold on one I'm second. What, 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 so what, but here's the point. But the, the point is, historians are totally silent on the question in terms of that there's, there's, there's nothing to go with. There is no historical discussion about a global flood because there's nothing, there's no evidence. All the evidence would demonstrate there's never been a global flood, never. One second, one second, one second, one second. But you keep ignoring the point. We're not talking about history silence. History is not silent. It is saying where crucifixion came from. It is saying where crucifixion emerged. It is saying that crucifixion followed a certain path. It is saying that certain civilizations communicated crucifixion. It, so, 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 no, no, it is a, no, you, no, you don't understand. You, you, you're missing the point, right. Do, just think about it in terms of the mobile phone. Would you agree that the mobile phones is now a well-evidenced thing? Would you agree that the cone of evidence for mobile phones would go like this? Would you agree that when it reaches this point, that that would be the approximate date of when crucifixion occurred? And that we could also use that cone of evidence to identify where crucifix, sorry, where the mobile phone emerged in America? Right, so we could use the emergence of evidence to accurately say where the mobile phone came from. Is that agreed? Yeah. Right, hold on one second. So if we can use it accurately to say where the mobile phone came from, we're using all the same principles in all the same ways to say where crucifixion came from. And that is why the Quran is wrong. And that, that's what I'm saying. So I'm taking your words now. What you just said, I'm summarizing that one. You said, if, I, if the history leads us towards the precise point, we have to believe on that history. It does. We have to believe on that history. Like conclusively, if history says that we see, forget about his, uh, if no, they put the no, probability. It an increased probability. Yeah. If that, if, an increased probability. If the Which you agree with. Yeah, 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 that's what I'm saying. I'm taking, I'm concluding, concluding your words, what you just said. Yeah. No, so I'm not saying that, so yeah. I'm, well, I'm not saying that we have to, because I concede that history works by probabilities. Yeah. I concede that. So when you see yourself so my point says, to you is, oh, my point to you is, speak, my toy point to you is, is that it increases oh, yeah. the probability. The evidence code yeah. increases the probability. Yeah. But still, you and me believe we can't precisely say that that was happened on that day. That was happened at that time. We can't precisely say. That's why the world probability mitigate all certainty. And you and me believe that. I, I won't. I won't uh, take, I won't deny you that you don't say that, but what I'm trying to deny you, you are accepting the fact that there was a, uh, no crucifixion at the time of the Paroha, because we can't, the history, what history says that there wasn't, a, history also doesn't say there wasn't any crucifixion at the Paroha time, but history pro pointed out towards you uh, one time period, but that's what I'm in me saying that it could be way before then that. I, Think about this for a second, right? We've got a pharaoh who's practicing crucifixion, so it's state policy. So we would expect to sign some evidence of this, some continuity of practice. The reality is, this is why the Quran is talking about crucifixion, because it is a seventh century document written by a seventh century Bedouin who didn't know any better and who knew that crucifixion was something that had been practiced 
recently in the world in which he grew up in, the, 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 the Near East. And that is the reason why and because whether Muhammad or the people that edited and, and, and formed the Quran after Muhammad wanted to practice crucifixion, they project it into the past. That is what is really happening. I will take your words, but there are so many scientific, uh, which has been proven now, that it says the world is expand, expanding. And the, uh, science, science just says 1930. In 1929, the Hubble discovered that the yes, universe is expanding. But the Quran Can says you show me the verse that says that? Museum, yeah, yeah. So here's the problem with that. Firstly, we've got it in Isaiah. I am the Lord thy creator, I have created all things by my, heaven, by, by my power alone, I have stretched out the heavens. Incidentally, it was a Catholic priest that came up with the idea of the expansion universe. That's a Christian idea. It's a Christian idea that you can find in Isaiah. Now, I'd like to see the verse where it says that Allah is stretching out the heavens. Show me that verse. It says the world has been expanding. The world? No. The universe has been Show me that verse. Show me that verse. The thing is, if you're going to argue that we have to believe in the Quran because of scientific facts, then that means that it's fair to me to marshal the argument that the Quran is wrong because of its scientific errors. The Quran says that the world is flat. The Quran says there can't be a solar eclipse. Both of these statements are false. The Quran gets it wrong. The Quran gets its embryology wrong. It says that human beings are, are created from a lump of flesh, that bones come before flesh. That's just wrong. There's lots of scientific errors in the Quran. So where's the verse that says that the heavens are going to open? No, 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 no. Let, let's, let, 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 let's, where's the actual passage? Let's get it. Can you hold that for a second? Where's the passage? Let's just pull it open. So does, now, now the fact is, bro, you said that we have to believe in the Quran because no. the Quran says the universe is expanding. Does that mean that you should now believe in the Bible because the Bible says that the heavens are expanding? There are certain verses which we believe on Bible which about... No, I'm saying, do you have to believe in the Bible because it's got a scientific truth in it? I, I haven't come across with that. When you show me, then I will see that. Uh, how can I say that? Uh, if so, are, uh, where, where's your because, passage? Um, just hold on a second, I will lose it. No, I'm not a, I'm not a uh, important person. <laughs> Alright, I'll hold it. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. you find it, I'll hold it. So my point is, if you're going to argue that Islam is true because of scientific truths in the Quran, then it is a fair argument to say that the Quran is false because of all the Quranic errors in science. And there are multiple Quranic errors in science. So what's, what's this position? What's this verse? Am I allowed to... I know, I'm, I'm talking to him, bro. I know, but am I allowed to speak... Uh, I'd ask you, no, I'd ask you to talk to... I'd ask to talk to you in private, that's what I've said. My position has not changed from earlier today, Yaya. Yeah, yeah, but you're talking about the Quran. Yeah, I'm and talking about the Quran because, because, Defender, because, yeah, yeah. because, because so Musl a Muslim interrupted going, me talking about the Bible. I'm not going to stand here, listen to you, misrepresenting Quran. So, go on, have you found the passage? What's the passage, please? And the heaven we constructed with strength and indeed we sit its expander. Okay, so I accept you've got a verse that talks about the heavens being expanded. Brilliant, so have I. I am the Lord thy creator. I have created all things by my power alone. I have stretched out the heavens. The Bible says it, the Quran says it. So where are we going from there? No, no, I didn't say anything about that. No, you said, oh yes, no, because you tried, you tried to suggest we should believe in the Quran because of scientific truths in the Quran. So what about the scientific what errors in the Quran? That you denying Quran because of the, the Sulibu word which says that the crucifixion, that's what I'm saying. We say, I'm saying we are both on the same page here that we can't say precisely or conclusively that if history leads us to somewhere, we have to believe it. Right, hold on one second because we're not saying the same. Because I accept probability. You are clearly not accepting probability. You are weighing your doubt against the probability of the evidence. And you're saying that the value of your doubt, the value of the probability it might be wrong, outweighs the probability that all the evidence could be right. Now, on one second, let me finish my point. Because you accepted that through the cone of evidence we could identify the time and the place that the mobile phone was invented. You accepted 
the, the cone of evidence would get smaller the closer it, it comes to origin and it would geographically zone in on its point of origin. And that is exactly what we find about the evidence of crucifixion. It zones in around the time of the Babylonians in the near Middle East, in Mesopotamia, in Iraq. Those are the areas. So that means that probably crucifixion started there, probably. But the degree of our probability increases because there is no corresponding outward cone going past that point. Which means that you're trying to suggest that just because there is that possibility, that tiny possibility, that it might have been invented sooner, that therefore we don't find an error in the Quran. But I'm sorry, probability means that we probably have found, would you agree we probably have found an error in the Quran? Probably. Answer that question. So what I'm trying to say, the word probability, probably, and word cer the word probably and word certainty, there are. That's why these words are there. When we say probably, we put a doubt inside. So how come you, like, uh, taking the doubts and you can just say that because of that probable, the and because what happened? You don't take probably. You take probably as a certainty. Okay. That's what I'm let, saying. Let, let me ask you again because you didn't answer the question. Do you accept, based on the way our conversation has gone, yeah. that we've probably found an error in the Quran? I never say that and I won't say that because you didn't prove that. Okay, now here's your problem. The probability based upon the evidence cone is that we have. Now, you don't want to accept that. You want to weigh up that 2% of doubt against that 98% of evidence because you don't want to accept that the Quran has made an error. Let me just give you another one in passing because then I want to go back to my presentation. You said that I've never come across a verse that says that the earth is flat. In Surah 15, Ayah 19, this is what it says. And the earth we have spread out like a carpet. Can, can, is it fair to say carpets are flat? Carpet. Carpet, carpet yeah. Yes. I mean, yeah. So that we have spread out the earth like a carpet and set upon it mountains immovable, which is a second error. Do you agree that mountains move? Which is there? What's I have to do? Do you agree that mountains move? That's all I'm asking. It does. It does. It does. He's right. Yeah, yeah, he's right. All the earth is moving. But the Quran says. But the Quran says. Mountains firm and immovable. By flat means this is the flat. This is the flat. Do mountains move? I have to see that. Says it right there. All the earth is turning around. And right there. In Quran, there's this passage. It, it mentions, but it says that we we turn it. struck we, are not no, we struck mountain inside. It doesn't say move. Does it say immovable in the Arabic? Mountain from and immovable. You didn't get that point. You does it say immovable? No, but that's what you understand. Does it say? Does it say immovable? It says immovable, but you are right. understanding. And in the Arabic, does it say immovable? Bob, if you allow me just one minute, okay. one minute. All right. What it says, what Allah says it here, Allah says that we, Allah says we set, uh, we set the earth like a flat, like which you have seen, and we said we we struck a, a mountain inside the earth so that the earth can't move, so that earth can stable. So this right. is stuck about. Does the earth move? No, no, no. You don't know what you're talking about. Every geologist will tell you that the tectonic plates. The tet so do the earth, does the earth move? Now, in the normal circumstances, it not move, yes, but there it is does. an earthquake. When there's an earthquake. So is that earth, is the earth moving then? When the earthquake is come. When and and do those and do those movements create mountains? No, no, that's never said. That. Bro, Who said bro, that? you don't know geology. Let me just tell you, right? Do you know geology? I don't know geology. Right. But I know, I know geology enough to tell you that the earth moves that those movements create mountains and that the mountains move. So, you mean that when so when the Quran says that the mountains are put there to stop the earth moving, moving. to stop the earth moving, yeah. it is precisely wrong because shaking. mountains are created by the earth's <laughs> movements. <laughs> Did you hear that? Yeah, yeah, I heard you. That okay. mountains, <laughs> mountains are created by the Earth's movements. The Quran says that mountains are put there to stop the Earth moving. Yes. That is 100% wrong. It is entirely wrong. 
It is the movement of the earth that creates the mountains. That's what you are believing. Yeah. That is what every geologist on earth believes, and every good Muslim geologist will tell you the same. Can I ask a question? Say if the evidence showed that 98% um, it was a 98% chance that crucifixion and death come from Christians, that was a 2% chance of coming down, would you still go along with that 2%? It's, it's, it's the shell. In the ground, that is the mountain. Of the it's the shell. Brother, you need to study geology, okay? Yeah, you look at it. But, but mountains are created because of the Earth's movement. They aren't stopping the Earth from moving. The Quran is in error. It is in error. Okay, I want to get back to my presentation. It was nice talking to you. In fact, it, no, it was a real pleasure to talk to you. I really enjoyed it. You're such a nice person. I want to give you a gift. Dialogue, yeah. The word, the word uh, which is you just uh, there is a uh, laugh of the dog one. Kiki, kiki, kiki. I, I, yeah. I want to give you a gift. <laughs> I want to give you a gift. What's your name? Yasin. Yeah. Yasin, it was really lovely to talk it's to you, Yasin. Yeah. Yasin, if you study what I said about the mountains and you yeah. agree with me that the Quran has got you wrong, you owe it to yourself yeah. to learn about Jesus, okay. because this is the savior of the world. This is the man. Great, not my Jesus though. You believe in a different guy called Isa. You don't believe in my Jesus. And Isa is not the same as Yeshua. The, the one that the Quran talks about and calls Isa is not the historical Jesus. The historical Jesus is the one you find in the Gospels. But I want to give you this. It's all about Jesus. It's, it's three pounds. Yeah, I, I got it. It's a gift. Yeah? But that's better than a silly little pamphlet. And I want to say this to Christians. Stop buying crap chick flicks and silly pamphlets that are 12 pence and that are look and read stupid. Have the generosity to give people real books. There you go. Okay, I want to go back to the presentation that I was making.